are so bright Pull your hat down, make sure your cinch is tight Horse is kinda snuffy, cold chill up your spine It'll get your ass moving some more burn on daylight Welcome to Burning Daylight, the only podcast for the working cowboy. Well, howdy there, Daylight Burners. <clears throat> um, happy, was it Monday, I guess? Yeah. It's been a long, long winter. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't recall what day it is a lot of the times, but uh, I guess this is Sunday. And I recognize that because uh, my wife said, hey, we're watching uh, The Sopranos and this is not what we normally do on Sunday, so what the hell? And, um, well, you know, it, it happens. So, anyhow, um, here we are, Monday morning, and I have been... I've been trying real hard all weekend to figure out what the hell I'm going to talk about. Uh, I tried to get a couple of different people on, on short notice and, uh, well, it was short notice and they had to, uh, had to do something else. And, oh man, I have just not had time to do a lot of research. Like I, I have, I have made note of a lot of topics that I want to talk about and uh, I just haven't had any of the time to, to go ahead and, and research those, those topics so that I kind of halfway sound like I know what I'm doing. Uh, so all of that led to tonight where I don't have anything really that, that, I, uh, that I had planned. Uh, no, nobody else to talk to. So I'm going to ramble and I hope you don't mind. Um, it's, it's a little bit, a little bit of a nonsensical, um, maybe stream of consciousness, but <sighs> well, anyhow, I, I just, I don't know when, when you, when you look at the facts of what's going on today, nothing but COVID. It's it's all COVID. Uh, there's sports going on, but the headlines are dominated by who won and lost because uh, of COVID. And, and I'm so goddamn tired of COVID that uh, that I can't even think straight. I, I just I, I I think it's all terrible, but maybe. Uh, Somebody else thinks it's more terrible than than I do. Well, I, I just I don't care I, at this at this point. I just I don't fucking care. And then I had uh, the pleasure of, of talking to Boots today, and and we got to talking about some of the old ways of ranching. And if uh, you're a Patreon subscriber. I'll I'll go ahead and uh, I'll put that up for you because I thought this was a really, really interesting conversation that I had with him. So, patreon.com slash burning daylight. Uh, if you'd like to, to hear that conversation, I'll, I'll put it out sometime, uh, sometime tomorrow, Monday. And, um, you know, I, I've got, I've got a bunch of stuff saved, saved up from him and, if uh, if you'd like to hear it, I'll I'll start releasing it, and that'll be only for the Patreon people. Once uh, once he's back to uh, you know when they're allowing uh, you know podcasts and whatnot, then uh, we'll we'll go ahead and uh, and start doing uh, as normal. But I've got a lot of really cool stuff saved up and stuff that I'm really proud of uh, talking to him and. And I think people ought to hear it. So if you'd like to hear that, just patreon.com 
slash burning daylight and uh you can you can hear that just uh sign up over there um so here i am uh i'm talking with boots i'm wondering what the hell is going to go on uh in the future uh i've been reading a bunch of stuff about uh you know people people that uh blaze the trail for us uh the people our our ancestors that that settled the west and i've also been uh you know with with those stories comes the the, the other side of the story so like part of uh you know settling the west was killing off the buffalo and that that wasn't because the buffalo was a nuisance it was because the american indian was a nuisance uh, in particular the plains indians they were a nuisance and their main uh, almost only source of food was the buffalo so you kill out the buffalo you kill out the the, the plains indian and it's one of those things that hits you as as an American. You're just like, well, that that's that's kind of fucked up, right? And yeah, it is. It is. It's real fucked up. But you you look back through history, and that's how it's always been. So what what makes uh, pushing the Indians off off their land and uh, and killing off the the buffalo supply? What what makes that unique to history? And really, the only thing I can think of is, well, it's because it's here. Uh, but if you look at uh, Asia, Europe, all of the, a- anywhere else on the globe, that that's that's just that's what happens. So, what happened here is is just simply a continuation of what's always happened is. Uh, People want land, and uh, to go get it, they they got to go fight for it. And it just so happens when when people landed here on American soil, the people that already lived here uh, had about two thousand years of catching up to do as far as technology goes. And and the white man who who landed on shore, well, I, for whatever reason they advanced a whole bunch uh, as far as technolo- uh, technology goes and they experienced a whole lot more as far as diseases go. That's something we're, we're experiencing right now with, with the whole COVID uh, I don't know, stuff, the, the COVID stuff. Um, and... and all of this led to current day, you know, how, how we, we conquered here and, and how maybe it was just a unique period in time where not only uh, did we have the, the, the same conquering mindset that people have always had, but we also came through the enlightenment where we, we realized, um, hey, maybe maybe we shouldn't uh just take over people's land uh maybe maybe people actually have rights instead of a king telling you what 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 you're allowed to do and and we we're at this like weird nexus of all all of that like the old way of thinking versus the new way of thinking and and because of that we're uh and I say we, uh, and I mean Americans in particular, judge ourselves very harshly compared to the rest of human history. And but I, but I also think I think rightly so because we're 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 the first real experiment in uh, individual uh, government or you know self governance and uh, individual liberty. So. I, I think there's a, there's a case for us to be judged more harshly against uh, the rest of history because we 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 set these these rules that that nobody else really had before, and we're like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna abide by these because this this is uh, this is something we we find important. 
So when, when, when you see these things uh, get violated by the country who, who has uh, made their name of upholding these, these, uh, these rights and whatnot, I don't know. It's, it's just uh, it's a strange, it's a strange quandary we're at. And I don't know. It gets it gets real deep real quick. But I I always like to go back through history, and <clears throat> I've named this this episode uh, "Dumb Shit Cowboys and Undying Breed," and I say that because I think since the you know I, I invention or uh, like since the very first guy that took care of, of cows a horseback um which i I've, I've come to find out was actually back in like morocco um but ever since then i, I think people have said the cowboy is a, is a dying breed like that 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 won't that the way the way uh uh, society and technology is moving along that that'll never that'll never last because you know they'll, they'll get passed by the wayside and then somebody will find a, a better way to raise cattle and, and move cattle and whatnot and and eventually the cowboy is, is gonna is just gonna be dead because there'll be no use for the cowboy and and i think that happened back in the 1400s or wherever uh whenever that started because at the end of the day working with cows is it's, it's pretty tough business and it always has been and i think it always will be there there's always improvements to to make it a little easier to deal with cows but at the end of the day you're still dealing with a cow and you can you can breed some of the meanness out of them you can you can breed them to be a little bit more um compliant when when you're you're working with them and even even like uh say a holstein which uh is still very much a bovine but it's a different different type of creature uh the the most tame and calm uh cattle breed there is well, well, that that animal will still walk walk right out of the over the top of you just because you're happen to be standing there, and, and a fourteen hundred pound cow that walks over the top of you that that's gonna that's gonna break some shit on a human uh, most of the time, and and that that old cow you could have done everything right as far as animal handling goes, and, and that. And she'd still just walk right over the top of you because man, you just happen to be there. And, and that's the type of animal that we deal with on a daily basis. But not only that, we, we choose to use another animal to steer these other animals around. These, these animals that will, uh, you know, on, on the very nicest end of thing, will just walk over the top of you because you happen to be in their way. But on a on a you know a less optimistic point of view they'll uh not only walk over the top of you but they will run right over the top of you and stomp you into the ground because you happen to be standing right in their way and then you you might even give them a reason to to be angry and say like you you grab their calf and and try to put a tag in their ear well, now you 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 actually have pissed them off, and um, and you're a hundred percent in the fault because uh, that's not your your baby, and well, you still you, you're you're expecting them not to to uh, to do anything about it, and if they do, then you have to you're put in a quandary of do you keep them around because they're they're good at, at whooping off a coyote. Uh, because they went ahead and whooped you off, or do you send them to the sale because you're worried about somebody getting hurt the next time that that old mama has a, has a baby? And I don't know. It just it's kind of the like the 
it's always been the quandary when, when you're when you're working with cattle is uh what's what's the best way to go because you you want the these animals to be a little bit a little bit mean a little bit ornery because they gotta they gotta take care of a calf but you still gotta you gotta deal with them and so you want them to be manageable at, at best you know just manageable i guess and and there's you know the very first thing was well somebody braided a riata and they, they went ahead and roped a calf and or a cow and, and now you got him caught and that's that's the first you know like corral i guess or, or pin and then somebody's like hey we we could instead of going out there and roping them with this rawhide and, and uh and, and jerking them down and, and doing what we have to, we could also get around behind them and push them into this, this little catch that we got here. And th so then you have your first like real corral. And, and I would bet that there was, there was cowboys or vaqueros or gauchos or where, you know, whatever uh, part of the world they, they were at the time somebody built a set of pins or corrals and they're like, well, that, that's the end of cowboy. And as we know it, because shit, if you can't rope them and you know, the, the guy that owns the cows, he's going to be like, Hey, just, just run them up into this corral instead of roping them. And, uh, well, shit, there, there goes, there goes the fun. There goes all the damn fun. And well, then they keep on, bunch of cows because people still want beef that that's a that's the amazing thing about about cowboying is as far as i can tell the the demand for beef has never weakened like there's always 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 been a demand for beef at least as far as in the americas go and and that leads you to like well, well what what led to all these to the to the way of life that we love the ranching and and and, and cowboying and whatnot and i was i was doing a little reading on charlie goodnight who is a uh, ancestor of one of my one of my buddies from college adam goodnight correct ancestor and we're we're gonna do an episode on charlie goodnight but i i, I don't want to go into that uh without knowing much so I want to do some research and I, and I, I messaged him and said, Hey, I, I'm, I'm still doing some research, <clears throat> but just uh, a little bit of cursory reading on him. And it's fascinating is they, they, they started the cow business with, uh, well, it started out as uh, Charlie Goodnight and and one of his one of his friends or, so, or maybe a brother in law something like that. And the entire time they ran cows, it was like trying to figure out where do people want beef. So the Goodnight Loving Trail uh, went from East Texas to Eastern New Mexico, basically. And then from there, they, they either hit a railhead or they, they moved them up north. Uh, they, they, they moved cattle uh, from, from Texas all the way up to Montana. It was, uh, you know, Charlie Goodnight was one of the inspirations of, uh, of the novel Lonesome Dove. But even though that, that story was, was fiction that particular uh, set of characters and whatnot was fiction The the story was a hundred percent true about how it was all about getting food to somebody uh, at the end of the day. <coughs> and it doesn't matter how much we advance technologically uh, in the future, we're still going to have to eat that. That's how the human body works. And if there's people needing to eat, there'll be people wanting to buy beef. And if there's people wanting to buy beef, there'll be guys that are willing to take beef or cattle over there to them. And th those people that, that uh, take the, the cows to where, where they need to be slaughtered, well, 
there there's a cowboy and if as long as there's always a market for for beef there will always be a market for the cowboy will the wages rise uh over time i i think we might see that here in i don't know if i'd say the near future but i i, I think uh the way the way the economy is going and everything right now um people are starting to realize that their dollar is not worth a whole lot and even if you get a high paying job as long as the the cost of living keeps going up with it you're you're not really getting ahead and and one once once this whole financial system collapses upon itself because it will i don't know when i don't know how close we are but it it has to at some point there's going to be a high demand for for food because there's going to people be a lot of people scared and i don't there, there's always going to be a job for the cowboy i and as as much as as the cowboy has been labeled the dying breed uh since probably it's very inception i i think i think it'll always be continued to uh be described as that but i think there's always going to be a place for for the cowboy because there's always going to be people wanting to eat some beef uh but that being said i i've i look look back at uh at how how this whole industry was built and, and the the culture that was that was built around it and it seems like it's as old as time but then then you when when you really dig into it a lot of the the practices uh and, and whatnot that we we deem as just traditional ranching uh they're not as old as we you might think and and charlie goodnight's a good example of that uh he he was uh one of the first big cattle guys and and he was one of the driving forces behind the set of cowboy rules where you didn't drink you didn't gamble you didn't do what do all that and and that wasn't because he was such a good uh honest upstanding character in himself it was because well they needed to get beef to market and they wanted their guys to be reliable so they they implemented these things well, sorry, folks. I hate to interrupt this riveting, transfixing conversation that I got going on right now, but I got some people that helped me uh, put this show on the air, and I got to tell you about them right now. So first and foremost, we got Tracy Morrison, Custom Silver. He's out of Chelsea, Oklahoma. Uh, you know him from the show. You've seen his work all over my social media, and uh, and he just does a really good job of building cool cowboy shit. Uh, buckles, bits, spurs, conchos, uh, anything uh, along those lines, he can hook you up. Uh, his engraving has... In- like man he has got way better he was pretty damn good when i uh when i first started talking with this guy but man he's he's increased a bunch since then and uh and he's doing it full time now so uh he's making really good work he's pricing it for the working cowboy and he's building it for the working cowboy you can find him over on instagram at t morrison uh underscore custom silver uh let him know you heard about it on the burning daylight podcast uh next up we got scott jason hall you know him from the podcast as well. He's an old buckaroo cowboy, and he is a master jeweler. He is uh, he can uh, do uh, goldsmithing, silversmithing, uh, plat- gold and platinum inlays, and he can also do repasse, which is uh, the cutting and setting of gemstones, just like this turquoise you see here. Uh, he made that for my wife, and uh, he he is an artist through and through. He also does a pen and ink sketch, and uh, he he's just I mean, he's uh, one of my good buddies and uh, just a hell of a cowboy. And, and, and even, I mean, just just his artwork is is just incredible. So you can find him over on Instagram at Cow Camp Life or over on Facebook, uh, Hall's Rocky Mountain Jewelry. And uh, let him know you heard about it on the Burning Daylight podcast. Uh, next up, we got Brittany Hasseltine and uh, Square Top Leather and Design. 
Brittany is making cool leather gear for the working cowboy and cowgirl. Uh, she's out of Pinedale, Wyoming. And uh, she uh, she just does really cool stuff. Uh, she's making me a pair of leggings right now. And I can't wait uh, to see how they turn out. She does, uh, you know, leggings, shotguns, bat wings, uh, chinks, arminas, all that. All that head stalls, uh, breast collars. She does purses for the ladies. <laughs> Or for the dudes, if that's what you're into, we don't judge. Well, yeah, we judge a lot over here, but it's all in good fun. And, uh, hey, if you're a man and you want a leather purse from Brittany Heseltine, you can find her over at uh, Square Top Leather and Design. You know, got a underscore in between all uh, all the words there. So uh, go check her out. Give her a follow. Let her know you heard about it. <gasps> On the Burning Daylight Podcast. And uh, next up, we have uh, Cardomax.com. They are... Uh, uh, hold on, let me put, get that pulled up. Um, Cardomax.com. They are the the best... Uh, where are they? There we go. Uh they are the best uh, supplement company out there. Um, they're owned and operated by a former sh- Navy sh- Navy Shield Navy Seal Sean Matson, and uh, they're doing all natural, uh, least amount of ingredients they can in all of these uh, these supplements. Uh, the hydration, the Hydromax. Uh, that's a that's a really good one. I use that every day. The immunity booster as well. Got a bunch of adaptogens and a bunch of other shit in there that I don't know exactly what it means, but it sure makes you feel better when you drink it. Energy intensifier. If you don't like coffee or if you need something uh, like middle afternoon, it's uh, also use it as a pre workout. Uh, I haven't tried the recovery accelerant because uh, don't work out a whole lot, and uh, so but I might try that sometime. I don't know. We'll see. Either way, these two up here, immunity booster and hydration stuff, I use all the time, and uh, you should too. Uh, head over to cardomax.com, use the promo code Move Your Ass for ten uh, percent off. And uh, next up, we've got Greens Reserve. Uh, they are a all natural. Um, they're all natural. Uh, tobacco alternative made from 100% uh, hemp and uh, they got three flavors menthol, wintergreen and uh, natural I chew the natural it's kind of like a kind of a straight flavor like Copenhagen straight or uh, or a skull straight it's kind of the flavor of that one uh, wintergreen and menthol I haven't tried those yet but uh, I want to I kind of want to try this menthol uh, there's no, there's no THC in it. Uh, I don't know if there's any CBD in it or not, but it seems like it kind of helps me focus a little bit. So a lot of times when I'm researching, I'll throw one of these in instead of uh, uh, Copenhagen. But it's a, uh, it's a healthy alternative, and uh, it's a cool product. Uh, and yeah, go go over to greensreserve.com/shop. Use the promo code MattGR, and uh, you'll get a dollar off a can or five dollars off a roll. And I get a little kickback from it. So, uh, yeah, if you're tr- looking to try something different, uh, check these guys out. And um, and finally, if you don't like to uh, to listen to the ads, you can just head over to patreon.com slash burning daylight. You can sign up there at any of these levels and, uh, and you can, uh, you can get different, uh, different benefits. You'll get ad free, uh, ad free episodes for every level, but each level has got different perks. Um, should you, uh, should you join and, uh, helps me, uh, do some, some different cool things from this, for this show. And, uh, whether that be new equipment or trips or, whatever and um and i'm going to get back to doing the giveaway uh every month and uh we'll get some cool handmade gear uh for you guys to to get a chance to win so um and and it just like i said just helps me out so i appreciate everybody that has signed up uh we've got 47 i think um 44 44 and uh so that that's pretty cool um anyways um thanks to everybody that that supports this and uh, if you'd like to become a member just head over to patreon.com slash burning daylight now let's get back into the show 
and with that became or came like the the ride for the brand type deal. When actuality, the the first Cowboys, they uh, it started out as it was a job that they could get, and and I think that's that's always been the case with cowboying. Like you can always find a job cowboying. It's can you stick with it? Can you or will you? And the the guys that that uh that stuck with the the early days of cowboying, whether it be you know rounding up cattle down in South Texas or, or driving them up north, it, it took kind of a special breed. And there was a it was uh it's always been one of those industries where anybody can hire on, anybody can give it a give it a whack, but not many people make it. And, uh, and I, I've, I've worked in the feedlot industry for a long time and it may not be your, your typical cowboy lifestyle, but I can tell you, you got to be a pretty good hand to, to make it for very long because not only do you have to have to have the skill to, to read and, and work cattle, but you also got to have toughness because, uh, winter in the feedlot fucking sucks. Uh, winter a horseback most of the time fucking sucks it's it's not there's no two ways about it it just it it is not that fun and 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 winter is usually kind of a place where where it draws a line but i i guess as the farther south you go uh you get down in that south texas or or arizona country and what well, it gets just as in, unbearable in the summer when it gets that hot and so yeah, can you ride a horse? Great. Uh can you rope? Great. Uh can you can you handle a horse? Great. All right, can you do all of that when the weather is the worst uh you know, at at the, at its absolute worst. And and that's kind of where where the cowboy like are are you a cowboy? That's that's kind of where it sets in. And I think I think that's one of the uh, the unique things about the cowboy community is anybody that that has a saddle and or or, or can can sit a horse can give it a shot, <clears throat> and I, and I think anybody who cowboys for a living knows that like like I, I can think of dozens of people, and I and I'm still pretty young uh, for the most part, uh, especially when you talk to a guy like Boots, he he's coming up on ninety. Uh, but I, I'm 36 years old, so relatively young, and I, I can think of dozens of people that started out cowboying and uh, and never just never went through with it. Either they they found uh, a better job that that's usually what happens. It's always kind of been the case. Um, but it, there, there's something about the guys that stick to it and. Uh, and you talk to them long enough and you're like, why, why, why are these dumb shit cowboys still cowboying? And well, they're not dumb shits either. Like a lot of, a lot of times they're not. I mean, they, 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 uh, they live and work a dumb shit lifestyle, but it's a necessary lifestyle. And, and they do it because, well, I don't know, but that, that part of it's, that's that's all they know, but part of it it's uh it's just because that's what they want to do uh being able to 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 work with cattle uh means you have to deal with less people and, and that's that's usually uh one of the like one one of the big calling cards for any any guy that that cowboys is uh there's a good chance you're going to spend most of the day by yourself. And, and, and that, that's usually just fine. Um, but also like you, you look at these guys that have been at it for a long time and, and I'll, I'll use boots as an example because he's, you know, for, for us, he's the, he's the longest running one that, that, that that's done it for, for that long of a stretch. And, and you, you talk to the guy and he, he is not, he's not a dumb individual. 
at, by by any stretch of the the imagination. He's a pretty pretty smart guy, and uh, and he'll tell you about how he he's made a decent living uh, a, as a cowboy, and and he's uh, he he's fortunate enough to be uh, be born in the time where. Uh, started to be where the cowboy could actually make a living. Uh, but y- you look at his intelligence and and his skills, and there's and he'll tell you about many different points in time where he could have walked away and, and either you know took a, took an office job or, or something, and he had he had every capability in the world and they they he's still at 90 years old at the four sixes just i uh, called him called him this morning and he's out making the rounds check checking things making sure uh the ranch is gonna work tomorrow um and it makes sure it's gonna work smoothly and, and and this is a guy who as i was talking to him today he said you know, Charlie Goodnight died just before he was born. So, so we're you're we're within one generation of of like the founding of of modern cowboying, and, and today, just one generation removed, and 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 that's the uh, I don't know that kind of kind of puts a little bit in uh perspective how how new this uh this this industry that we work in even though it's uh it's it's an american classic original and uh you know just a, a very much a piece of of american uh folklore and, and it's still it's fairly new like when when you when you when you put in that in, in those terms, you know that there's a guy like Boots O'Neill who I I know I talked to, and and just before that guy was born, uh, the guy who basically founded uh, modern American ranching uh, was still alive. Just just shortly before this guy that has been around for. I know, a horseback for over 60 years. Uh, I, or I guess over, probably over 80. Eh. Long, long goddamn time. Long time. And, and he, he's, he's the intermediary, basically, between Charlie Goodnight and, and modern today. And, and so it, it's, it's a pretty new uh, industry with a very old feel to it and and they're just there's 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 something very unique about it and then the more you look at today and and how just like weird the world has got <clears throat> I, I was talking to uh to one of my good buddies Brad about uh cryptocurrencies today and you talk to a lot of the old timers. Say if I if I mentioned uh, Bitcoin to to Boots O'Neill, he he'd say, "What the hell are you talking about? I don't know anything about that." Uh, but if you if you put in the terms of cash to him, and uh, and a lot of different cowboys, it, it makes a lot of sense because like cash, they they can try to crack down on it, but at some point. If you're holding a coin or a bill in your hand, that's worth worth something. And however however you got it, there's no unless you're just willing to spill the beans. There's no real way to trace it. And that's that's kind of how Bitcoin is nowadays. And and I wonder if uh, as we move forward into the future. And particularly being like the 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 rancher, the cowboy, the conservative type person who doesn't like government, doesn't like taxes, 
uh, if they start to move more towards cryptocurrency, where it seems like I, I can't explain to you what a cryptocurrency actually does or where its value comes from, but I know it's worth something and it's worth quite a little bit. Um, and it's and it's basically anonymous. I, I wonder if that's how cowboying will turn to. Um, I'd say it'd be kind of a the rancher is going to be very slow to act on that, but the cowboy may may not be because we want paid and we want paid pretty quick like. Uh, so if if a uh, if a rancher can just just beep boop boop on their phone, then that's as good as cash in their hand. Like I just wonder. Like I, I see a lot of uh, like leather workers, uh, bit makers, and whatnot start to take uh, different forms of electronic payment, whether it be Venmo, Cash App, uh, PayPal. Uh, but that all can be tracked. And as far as I can tell, cryptocurrency technically can't can't be tracked. And I don't know, it just, it raises a, a good question. Is that, is that where, you know, like your day working cowboy is used to getting cash uh, under the table, if that's where that's going to go to. And, and then just when, when you're talking about working with cows and I talked with Boots about this, uh, like, are, are we going to evolve to where all all the cattle are, are more of a docile type like the Holstein just because they're easier to deal with and because they're easier to deal with you don't need a skilled uh skilled guy on a horse on horseback to deal with them. And I don't know, I, I think I think that's all something to consider. I don't see I still don't see the the cowboy going by the wayside. I think as long as there's a, a cow that needs taken care of, there there's probably a, a need for a guy that actually knows how to take care of them. So the, the cowboy lives on. I think. I think uh, maybe we'll get to a point where everything's automated, like in, in hog farms, <coughs> and there will be uh, no, literally, no need for for a guy horseback. But I don't, I don't see that happening anytime soon, and and I just I don't know. It, this, uh, like I said, this is, this is a rambling episode. But I just there's a, there's all these things that, that that fit together. Like I'm very uncertain about where where the future is heading. Um, but same time, I on Sunday I get to call a guy like Boots and and. And he, he's a guy who's drove a wagon across the Canadian River at the, the bottom of the Paladora Canyon. Uh, and not, not too far off from uh, when Comanches controlled the Paladora Canyon. And, uh, and that, that guy's still alive. And, and you think about how, how, how much things have changed since then. And how, and it seems like with technology, it just, uh, the rate at which, uh, at which stuff happens is just so much faster. And I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's a funny time we live in. And I don't, I don't know where it goes from here, but I, one, one thing I'm in, I am confident of is that, there's always going to be a need for a guy, a horseback, taking care of cows. But how that fits into our modern economy and how we get paid, how how shit happens, I, I don't know. And uh, like I said, I I don't I don't know how to explain to you cryptocurrency in a in a way that makes sense. But I do know that there's a lot of people investing in it and, uh, and a lot of people with a lot of money and influence that are that are investing in it 
So it seems like maybe something to pay attention to, but how that fits into the the cowboy world, that that's that's yet to be seen. And I don't know. Like uh we're we're getting ready to do a couple shows in Elko for the National Cowboy Poetry Gathering, which isn't technically happening. Uh but the National Cowboy Poetry Gathering was started by a couple cowhands that happen to be pretty good at poetry. And they just made it happen. And so now we got that same organization that, that just made it happen back in the day, decided that it's not, they, they, they can't do it. And now there's guys like me and, uh, and Justin Reichart and, uh, and a few other people that are, like, hey, we're we're still out here cowboying, and we still like to to go to town and and show off what we can do, and and put on the show for for the rest of our our cowhands, and, and and we we keep doing that, and they're they're just I don't know that that's that's the the cowboy spirit to me, and just like well, it doesn't matter what time it is, there there's always there's always these stories that need to be told about why we do what we do and that's what we get together for and then maybe we we don't have the endorsement of of somebody who who made it happen before but by god we're still cowboys and we're still going to go to town and and make it happen and it's just such a weird weird um little period in time but it, it uh i don't know it makes a guy think, and I I think there's going to be some really good stories told from it in the future. But I don't know. It, it just it's a weird weird point in time, and I, I don't even know where I'm going with all this. But um, it just just stuff to think about, stuff to ponder, and uh, I don't know. I I don't know. I I think uh, I think 2022. Um, kind of a snoozer to start off with compared to last year. Uh, but I think there's going to be some, some big changes uh, as the year goes on. I know there's going to be some big changes for me uh, that we, I've got some, some pretty big plans and, and we're putting them in motion, but the world just keeps getting crazier around us. And I, and I it just, it gets it gets to be a little harder to see where where folks like us uh like like uh myself and and you you other cow hands that are listening to this like where we fit into this whole whole mess and i don't know it, it's just it's weird and uh i don't know I, after the last couple of years i'm really glad that i do what i do uh it's one of those unsung job or, you know, unsung heroes like it's always been. Um, you go out there and you uh, you take care of cows and, you know, by you doing that, uh, somebody gets to eat and, and keep keep making a living for another day. And that's an important job and it'll always be there. So, um but how how it mixes in with uh, with how the world's going? I who who the fuck knows? I, I don't know. But uh, anyhow, I think I, I'm done rambling for the night. Um, it's just just a weird time, and I hope I hope something something I said made sense. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where it's going with any of it. But um, man, it's it's pretty cool that you guys still keep tuning in. Uh, get to talk to a few more people uh all the time and i i'm so excited that we're able to do this deal in elko i hope uh if you're around you, you'll uh you'll stop by we're at the stage door on the 28th and 29th of january uh it starts at eight o'clock ten dollar cover and uh it's gonna be a good show uh and if you can't make it we'll live stream it and uh and you'll get to You'll get to hear it, hear it all, not in person, but you'll 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 still get to get to hear it. And one of the, one of the other cool things about technology is, uh, you know, we, we've got people from 
from Oregon to Oklahoma uh, going to be performing in this this deal. And and they all came about because of this stupid little podcast that, that I put on. Uh, and I don't know. It's wild. Uh, it's wild how how technology has has uh, put us all together. And uh, I really can't wait to see where it goes from here. So anyway, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I, I truly appreciate it. And, uh, and thanks, everybody, that you know, that reaches out and with comments or concerns or whatever. Uh, I just, I, I appreciate everybody. I appreciate everybody. Cause, uh, if you're, if you're commenting that and send me a message, that means you're listening and it means I'm doing my job. So, uh, thanks a bunch. Um, y'all stay safe out there. Uh, this winter is, uh, it's been a, it's been a doozy already, but that means it's going to be a good spring, I think. So anyway, uh, thanks again for tuning in and move never your ass. rains Burning in daylight. Oregon and I never feared the dark. I never found no better place than here to hang my heart. I come confessing out of love and out of questions. Heavy on transgression. Hungry for the light In the darkness I see the golden land The sun set My horse is shod and shower And sparks across the granite I'm too young to forget That I'm here to work my day Along to yonder mountain as a falcon to its wings. But do I know it or where I wander? Do I know it or what I sing? Sinner, save your blessings. Where's those prayers I keep forgetting? Did I burn my best possession? I was hungry for the light. All that bombing.